Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are in the world, uh, and welcome to our uh, information session regarding uh, Harvard Medical School's online fellowship certificate in bioethics. My name is Tas Cochran. I am the director of the fellowship, and I'll introduce myself in a little bit uh, more detail soon. Uh, but first, a little housekeeping. Um, Zoom has a Q&A feature, and we encourage you to enter questions into the Q&A uh, so that we can uh, spend some time uh, focused on the things that interest you most uh, at the end of my remarks. Uh, and anything that we don't get to, um, <laughs> it is possible to contact us through our website, uh, and we'll have that information uh, on a slide at the end. Uh, so that you can always reach out and uh, have your questions answered. Um, what I'll do is start with some information about the fellowship and what it is. Uh, and I hope to talk for no more than 15, 20 minutes before giving it plenty of time for uh, question and answer. So what is the online fellowship? Um, it is a part-time academic fellowship that meets once a week from mid-January through early June. We are scheduled to have our first uh, class come through uh, starting in January 2025, and we plan to meet on Thursdays, uh, 9 a.m. through 11.30 uh, Eastern time in the U.S. Um, but uh, because this is an online fellowship, we hope to have uh, people from around the globe uh, and we pick that time in the hopes that that uh, it maximizes the opportunity for people in other time zones to join us. Uh, we will meet synchronously, meaning we're all together in a group. We are uh, learning and discussing together uh, a true fellowship. So this isn't an asynchronous learning opportunity um, like you might find online. This is uh, truly meant to be a fellowship that is dominated by uh, discussion and interaction and true fellowship. Um, because it's online, uh, we uh, thought it would be um, useful and interesting and hopefully attractive to also offer fellows the opportunity to visit Boston uh, for a two day in person experience where we will meet uh, in person for those who can make it. For those who can't make it, they can still uh, join um, remotely, um, but the opportunity to meet each other in person and to interact with uh, the fellows from the other in-person fellowship to interact in person with some of the faculty and staff uh, of the Center for Bioethics, uh, we think might will be an uh, attractive opportunity. I've just hinted at the fact that there is uh, another in-person fellowship, and this online fellowship is an outgrowth of that fellowship that is now uh, going to meet um, totally in person. Um, Harvard Medical School uh, began a, a fellowship in bioethics 33 years ago. So the class that's about to start uh, this year will be the 33rd class of the in-person fellowship. We didn't used to call it the in-person fellowship, but now that we're starting a parallel online fellowship, we need to distinguish the two. Um, and the online fellowship um, is, benefits from the fact that uh, the Center for Bioethics and those of us on the faculty and the staff have a lot of experience uh, in um, conducting a fellowship program uh, and teaching and, and learning alongside our fellows uh, about all things bioethics, um, medical and life sciences. So um, I'm going to uh, introduce myself in a little bit more detail and uh, my co-director, uh, Millie Solomon, um, will say a few words uh, about herself. Um, Millie uh, it has directed the in-person fellowship for about 23 years, and I completed the in-person fellowship about 20 years ago. Uh, so she and I have been affiliated with this program for a very long time, and I'm, I'm really thrilled that she and I are now co-directing the fellowships and that we're starting this new endeavor. So um, I am a neuromuscular neurologist uh, at, who's had a deep 
academic interest uh, in bioethics uh, ever since uh, I was a, a medical resident, a, a neurology resident. Uh, when I was a neurology resident, I pursued a neurology focused ethics opportunity through the American Academy of Neurology. And I realized that bioethics is actually a serious academic discipline all its own, and it fascinated me, um, partly because of the ethical dilemmas I found myself facing as a clinician. Um, but this opportunity opened my eyes to uh, all the all of the topics uh, across bioethics, which is much broader than just clinical care, you know, physician, doctor, nurse, patient um, relationship. Um, I then pursued the fellowship uh, at the Center for Bioethics, and Millie was the director at the time, which is when I really first got to know her. Um, and, uh, and after that year of fellowship, I completed a year of faculty fellowship at the Safra Center at uh, Harvard University. And ever since then, um, bioethics has been sort of a centerpiece of my uh, career. Um, I have done ethics consultation for many years. I've sat on an institutional review board uh, doing research ethics. Um, I have uh, several years of experience conducting clinical trials uh, from an industry perspective uh, and uh, put the skills that I learned in the fellowship in bioethics to great use over uh, a long period of time. Uh, and so this year, Millie invited me to uh, join her as a co-director of the fellowships and to lead the creation of this online fellowship. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm really, really thrilled to um, have Millie say a, a couple of words uh, about herself. Um, I've already pointed out that she's the longstanding director of the fellowship. Uh, she is also the uh, president emerita of the Hastings Center, which is a global bioethics think tank. And I'll let her say a few more words, if you would, Millie. Hello, everybody. It's really great to be here on the launching uh, of this new initiative. Um, I'm a professor of global health and social medicine and a core founding faculty member of the Center for Bioethics um, here at the medical school and in the Department of Global Health and Social Medicine. And I wanna say, um, if I can take the liberty of representing the faculty of, of the center, how happy we are that um, Dr. Cochran has agreed to launch this important new initiative. Um, uh, Toss, you already mentioned that we go back a long way, um, but he was too modest to um, really tell you as much about himself as I want to say just a sentence or two. He's he's extremely well versed in clinical ethics, in research ethics, in the ethical issues that arise in the life sciences and in the life sciences industry and its relationship with academia. Um, he's also a really great teacher. Um, so you're, you're in store for... Um, an experience that will be really enjoyable. Um, my own background is that I'm kind of an unusual person to have risen within the field of bioethics because I'm a social scientist. Um, my training is in research methods. Uh, I'm a research methodologist trained at the Harvard Graduate School of Education. And uh, along with a handful of other social scientists, anthropologists and sociologists, um, a number of us a long time ago, I won't say the number, were um, really pushing the field of bioethics to consider how it could integrate empirical research methods. And so that's kind of what my entree to the field of bioethics was. And my own area of expertise was focused on using empirical research to better understand um, our ethical approach to end of life care. Although as the president of the Hastings Center, I had the honor of being exposed to uh, many, many, many topics um, in current bioethics. Um, in closing, I just want to say two things that strike me about the fellowship that might be um, important for people to keep in mind. We've always structured it so that we can welcome working professionals. P and that's great because it means the seminars are, uh, the people in the seminar can bring their work experiences into the room. So it's not just a theoretical discussion, but also can bring the, what, the ethical issues that we're learning about back into their work environment. And the second thing that I've always loved about doing this is the interdisciplinarity of the group. So yes, it's run by Harvard Medical School. So of course there's many physicians, but we have a philosophical commitment to interdisciplinarity. And you can see that in the fact that many of our fellows represent a whole range of disciplines from nursing to 
um, PhD scientists to occupational therapists to social workers. Um, so it's a real a motley crew. Thanks for giving me the chance to say hello, Tas. Thank you, Millie. And you're anticipating me perfectly, and you're setting me up very nicely for uh, a slide or two down the road. Um, first, I just wanted to point out that Millie and I and the fellowships themselves um, are uh, located and live uh, as part of the Center for Bioethics. Um, and uh, pictured on the slide is the leadership of the center. Uh, I think uh, Wes Boyd, who is the director of education and who oversees us and the fellowships and the master's program uh, and a number of other educational programs at the center, uh, he's on the line. Um, we're very grateful to have you here, Wes. Um, Millie uh, just began hinting at um, who, who the program is intended for and what's the, what's the motivating idea behind the fellowship. So um, as she said, we um, have conducted the original fellowship for many years. Um, it was originally created for working professionals. So, you know, the, the structured time commitment is just once a week, just for half a day. Um, and we found that people have been largely been very successful in carving out uh, that much time uh, structured time to dedicate to the fellowship, uh, despite having uh, a variety of, of intense and demanding careers. Um, the fellows generally come from um, backgrounds in the life sciences, in healthcare or related fields. And as Millie said, we've had very diverse uh, fellows over the years. We've had dentists and veterinarians and lawyers and anthropologists, and uh, the list goes on. Um, and it we're really open to anyone who wishes to develop their knowledge and skills in bioethics as a serious endeavor as part of their career. And ideally, uh, this was part of the motivation behind the original fellowship was was that um, the fellows would come and, you know, participate in the fellowship for a year and then return to their home institutions and bring those that knowledge and those skills back to their institutions and employ them in defined roles right so uh, you know as you graduate uh, the fellowship we hope that you will be seen as somebody who's knowledgeable and trained in bioethics um, and that that uh, gives you sort of an opportunity to participate in policy making or ethics consultation or uh, paper writing or opinion making uh, at, at your own institutions and so when we are uh, when we review our applications this is the profile that we're looking for. Um, we're also looking, we, we really prioritize a diversity of backgrounds, uh, um, personal and professional backgrounds. We, we really find that the fellows benefit uh, and we benefit from the diverse uh, perspectives. One of the um, reasons for creating an online fellowship alongside the in-person fellowship is that it will increase our geographical reach. And we're hoping to, um, we're hoping that the online format allows us to have a very international um, feel to the fellowship. Uh, and uh, we know that we will, we will benefit from that. We will learn a lot from um, those perspectives uh, as well. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the, um, the topics and uh, and themes that will be covered in the fellowship. This is not a final list. This is this is not even quite comprehensive. But as you can see from the slide, um, we cover quite a lot of ground uh, in the fellowship, and we've got it divided up here, somewhat semi arbitrarily, into history and context, ethical theories and modes of moral justification, and selected topics. And um, I think what this shows is that we, we're hoping that fellows uh, who complete the program will have a good grounding and understanding in the history of bioethics and what came before us. Um, we certainly will introduce fellows to seminal papers and key resources, key journals, key textbooks uh, in, in bioethics. Um, we have a, we intend for the program to have a very solid uh, foundation in the philosophical underpinnings of ethics and the various modes of reasoning when it comes to ethical problems and dilemmas. Um, we find that um, 
this deepens one's understanding uh, when it comes to particular issues, you know, particular specific issues that arise in bioethics, uh, and it helps one understand the perspectives of others who may be coming from a different philosophical tradition or a different uh, angle of analysis and having familiarity with different modes of moral reasoning, we think is, you know, really important if one is dedicated to um, a professional focus in bioethics. So we will spend a lot of time talking about philosophy and, and moral reasoning, and then that grounding will be employed when we talk about uh, specific issues in bioethics, which are shown on the right here. And as we work through specific issues in the clinic or in the life sciences, um, we will continuously refer back to the modes of analysis and the rationale that we use when we, you know, when we form an opinion in a, in a case, uh, a bioethics case, we want to understand, you know, what's the reasoning that got us there? What are other ways that someone could approach the problem? Uh, so, with, you know, over the course of 22, 24 weeks, um, we will cover a lot of ground. We have a lot of different speakers um, who will uh, conduct these sessions. So Millie and I will do um, a number of these sessions ourselves. We'll lead these sessions ourselves. Um, but right now we've got 14 speakers for to cover all these topics, um, many from the Harvard ecosystem and many from other institutions. Uh, many of them are very senior, very experienced people. Um, who have a lot of expertise and who know lots of people in the field. And so um, not only will we be learning from, you know, these very experienced um, and, and, you know, seriously talented academics, um, we'll, we'll have the opportunity to interact with them and, um, you know, come away with a sense of who's who, what are the hot topics, how is the field moving and evolving over time. So, We, um, we, we think we've got an attractive uh, program. We, we know that the in-person fellowship has been uh, very successful for many years. Uh, and as this is an outgrowth of that and is leveraging our skills uh, and our, our resources uh, online, uh, we think that, that this should be an attractive program. Because of COVID, we've had several years of conducting our fellowship largely online. The, the original in-person fellowship has been online for a few years. Um, and so uh, we've we've gotten the knack of uh, virtual teaching, and we think we can deliver um, a really robust and collegial fellowship where uh, the interaction with the with each other and our learning from you uh, is as robust as it as it can be.